Uh, we would like to invite now today's fourth speaker, uh, Ms. Elisa Fernando, who will talk on military assisting police during crowd dispersal duties, addressing the grey area of Sri Lankan pragmatism. <clears throat> a short introduction of Ms. Elisa Fernando, who is a graduate at Faculty of Law under General Sir John Kotluwala Defence University. She has attended school at St. Bridge Convent, Colombo, and has followed a diploma in Human Rights at the Center for Studies of Human Rights in the University of Colombo. Her research interests include defence and strategic studies and human rights law. With this, you may please proceed, Eliza. Thank you, sir. Honorable Chair, ladies and gentlemen, good evening to all of you. The topic of this research is military assisting police during crowd dispersal duties, addressing the grey area of Sri Lankan perspective. Crowd dispersal duties of Sri Lanka is executed under three main spheres of rules and regulations, such as under the general law of the country in accordance to Criminal Procedure Code and Penal Code of Sri Lanka, in police under Department Orders A18 and A19, and in military as per British pamphlet. As seen on the slide, in the Sri Lankan perspective, Crowd dispersal duties are mainly two-folded, as police crowd dispersal duties and military crowd dispersal duties. It was revealed throughout the research that when both crowd dispersal duties work together, there arise several loopholes due to the drawbacks in the aforesaid regulations. Therefore, the research outcome is to formulate feasible recommendations to surmount these challenges. In general, military is summoned when the crowd cannot be dispersed using civil force. Therefore, in such situations, though there exist no such well-defined joint operations between police and military, in practical, both organizations follow a certain accepted procedure of joint operations based upon department orders of police and British pamphlet. The following slides of this presentation will emphasize the existing procedure in a nutshell. In dispersing a crowd as per the existing joint operations, First is to obtain the cooperation of the crowd by the senior police officer talking to them courteously but firmly, explain the reasons and give them time to di digest and explain wordings. Also, must avoid unfriendly sarcasm, aggrievedness and domineering attitude. Then, shall announce the crowd continuously in Sinhala or Tamil or English at least by one language which can be understood by the writers to be dispersed peacefully. In the third step, police officers should line across the full width of the road and join arms making use of the butcher's grip. Also behind the line, it is appropriate to have two to six spare men to diplomatically deal with any individual who may break through. Next, police riot squad should be in line in order to control the righteousness behavior of the crowd. If that also did not succeed, then water cannons and tear gas assistance shall be used. Then, warning fire should be made by the senior police officer to the sky. Next, police firing squad should be in line and shall perform firing orders according to department orders A19. Then after, as per civil procedure code, sections 95 and 96, military shall be summoned. 
therefore military firing squad should be in line and process as per british pamphlet finally in a worse situation summon air force for further air assistance when we consider this procedure actually this was uh, these steps were emphasized to recall your memory that this is the existing procedure in general practice it is a recognized principle that as per the gravity of the tense situation police may start this process at any appropriate step furthermore the next step shall only be exercised only if the preceded step got failed the prime example for the great failure of a forced discussed existing joint operations between police and military it was victimized in the year 2013 ratupasale incident finally in uh, uh, july 2015 human rights commission investigation report on ratupasale incident it was declared that army is responsible for the deaths and moreover there had been contradictory evidence regarding the person responsible for summoning the army this report clearly pointed out the gray area of existing crowd dispersal duties in finding remedies to overcome another such failure in the future this research suggests three main recommendations as first not to seek military assistance at all in order to disperse crowd second if necessary not to summon military but to seek the assistance from special task force of sri lanka police third formulate a new legal notion by strengthening the dilemmas of existing joint operations between police and military in addressing the gray areas first it is utmost important to understand that in crowd dispersing it is a heated deal with civilians which cannot be hypothetical it is a practical scenario which has to be handled in a very careful manner also the situation cannot predict whereas no one is able to forecast the righteousness on the other hand according to the geographical area type of the issue race politics religions and cultural aspects the gravity of the tense situation may vary as well as it may take different forms therefore experience and tactical officers must be mobilized for crowd dispersing duties by both organizations who is thorough with the aforementioned background knowledge of the situation because during these practical incidents throughout the research it was revealed that some officers tackle harsh incidents very successfully whereas some fails even in basic simple tasks therefore this is all about the personal leadership qualities of the officers in which the hierarchy must identify and suit the correct person to face the situation in many situations it was seen that when military is summoned for crowd dispersal duties military strength is over mobilized in several places of the area unreasonably and also sometimes even without the knowledge of the police this practice should be evaded and military shall only be called as per in the criminal procedure code sections not only by any other interferences in order to succeed in joint operations in every area in both police and military organizations there exists a hierarchy or chain of command therefore it is a responsibility of the area commander of the military and the range in charge police officer to formulate a contingency plan of crowd dispersal duties which can arose in the particular area in any circumstance moreover senior officers of both police and military required to plan and focus on the strength of the officers available in the area weapons or batons water cannons and tear gas availability facilities to video record the incidents and other necessary precautions this would highly necessitated to overcome any unexpected riot in the particular area more 
moreover in joint operations should not be kept only to face during an actual riot these proceedings must rehearse at least monthly adjoining both military troops of the area and by the police strength actually this principle has been already recognized under chapter 3 section 10 of the british pamphlet that if disturbances are expected military intervention should be planned and rehearsed with the civil police but in the sri lankan pragmatism it is very pathetic and it was revealed that this has only been limited to the black and white letters of the regulations the importance of such rehearsals with address the role of each officer during the dispersal duties which would also advocate the mutual relationship of the officers and will lead to morally brace the performance collectively furthermore in order to achieve this object duly assigned squad of military and police personnel must be trained in police it is recommended that the right squad of the area to be used for this purpose in conclusion being a proud nation who defeated the world's most pernicious terrorists ATT it is rather a disgrace to witness that sri lanka police and sri lanka military fails in crowd dispersal duties by sometimes even resulting fatality to civilians therefore this research is a need of the hour which shall pay attention by all of you gathered here today to execute the proposed recommendations in order to uphold and inculcate professionalism of both police and military personnel during crowd dispersal duties of sri lanka thank you thank you miss elisa fernando um she spoke about military and police forces are established in every state with the prime objective of preserving state and internal security respectively in some occasions military are employed to assist police in order to uphold the law and order of the country she emphasized to introduce new means and method for joint task duties in crowd dispersing when police is aided by military and also to educate both police and military personnel in combination rather than to maintain separate procedure forces wise ultimately these reforms are to be introduced to the defense strategies in order to inculcate professionalism of both police and military personnel for national development in order to overcome many challenges in future thank you